Uh, this is about digital influence, interference perhaps. Well, let's talk a little bit about a vulnerable cyber attack uh, or a Canadian election that's vulnerable to cyber attack. With our next guest, he is a digital security expert. He's the CEO of a Vancouver-based company called GlobeX Data. And uh, joining us on the conversation is Alain GIE. And uh, thank you very much uh, for being a guest on our show today, sir. Thank you, Sheldon. Pleasure being with you. When we talk about the vulnerabilities and we talk about the possibility of our process being hacked, are you suggesting it would come by uh, our own personal computers, or are we talking about the computers involved with government? Where exactly do you see the vulnerability? Well, the first vulnerability comes with our mobile devices because they are less sophisticated. They don't have fancy microchips because... There's only a certain value of a, of a mobile. And then from there it goes to the computer, and sometimes the vulnerability is also in the data center of the Internet service provider or telecommunication provider. We know businesses have vulnerabilities in that they have data, they have information that they want private, and there are examples in Canadian media of companies that have uh, someone in, infiltrate their system, lock it down, and then force them to pay a ransom. Are those the kinds of things we're talking about? Yes, so that, that is the most obvious one. That would be ransomware. But there's also invisible ones. There was recently a, 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 a GIF image, I guess, that was sent through WhatsApp, and then people click on it, and then essentially your entire device has the bug and they also search your contact list, and that spreads like that to, to infinite. So the obvious one would be a business gets locked down. They are essentially hostage of this hacker until they pay, and they can get access to their data because most people have all of their files on their computers. They don't even back it up. They don't use secure cloud systems. So when that computer is locked up, they're ba basically their business is shut down because data is the lifeblood of any business. But there's a lot more malicious, invisible versions of hacking as well. Uh, Alain GIE is here with us. He's the CEO of Vancouver-based Globex Data, Global, uh, sorry, Globex Data Limited. So what is the end game? Is it always about money? Uh, we, we're worried about uh, influence over our, our election. Who really cares? Uh, what, what, what's in it for a company to try and influence our election? That's actually a very different point. So it's all about money at the mass market and business level. When you are talking about political uh, influence, it's mostly within a country. I would say most likely another country that would try to disseminate fake news and, and robots on social media because all the voters have social media. And it's a, at that point, it becomes a game of influencing voters through social media these are all automated system. And imagine the, if, if Canada goes left or right or center, the politics and the economy of the country are going to be guided by the next prime minister who may or may not be friendly to certain countries. So, you know, there are some countries out there that want to influence the political landscape of uh, Canada by basically helping or destroying the election of the next potential prime minister. It has big uh, ramifications globally, essentially. I, I recall not long ago there was a, a, billboard, a billboard campaign that went up, so very much low-tech media, which is a sign that people drove past, and it was about uh, immigration. It had to do with one of the political parties and their leader. And when we trace back the money to who paid for it, it turns out it was a company that trades in proteins. So very much you would have to make the connection that the candidate and the party that's against supply management has been influenced or this company that that trades in protein is interested in perhaps the policy of supply it, management it, it, but that that's a hard this is actually if i may sheldon this is a very intelligent way to do it this is exactly how they profile all of us on uh, through uh, our social media profile our activities uh, our location device. So, for example, in this case, it could be targeting the meat eaters, which they may have a, a typical stereotypical of a more of a conservative value and right wing, etc. So the guy that goes hunting 
is a right-wing extremist that doesn't want immigration. Now they're going to go after whoever bought hunting gear in the last two years. It's as silly as that, and then they have the profile of these guys, and they say, anybody that likes meat, I'm simplifying it, of course, mm-hmm. may be more right lean than a vegetarian that may be leaning to the left, more liberal, etc. This is a, a very typical example uh, of, of what's of what happening right now. And GIE is here with us. As uh, you may not be aware, we just had a special election, a by-election for a municipal council seat here in Halifax that was online only. The only votes that were allowed were electronic votes. We have a system in Canada where we're not there we're not there yet. What about the integrity of the servers and the systems that are in place that, that hold all the data on us as electors? Well, unfortunately, I'm willing to bet anything that those servers are hosted by uh, one of the three big cloud companies. It could be Amazon Web Service. You can have a Canadian company running the show, but then their servers are hosted through Amazon Web Service. So you have a security issue, you have privacy issues, uh, there's a whole bunch of issues that happen. Most of these services are um, outsourced to third parties, so that's where the, the leaks happen. I should mention that I've had a few discussions with, uh, with some, some people, and what is even worse, which we don't talk about, is the, the, the candidates themselves and their political party, what kind of email they use, how do they protect their device, are they being hacked or not. And there is a complete lack of security in that whole spectrum. And when one approaches them, they say, we're busy with the elections, we'll look at it after the elections. And I should say, you want to have secure communications before the election or while you are running a campaign, because if you're communicating with your uh, close circle and, then, and a hacker comes and knows all your conversation, well, that's not good, right? Mm. Uh, this is your business, your area of expertise, and, and I'm not sure if I ask you how concerned we should be whether... Um, whether the answer I'm going to get is based on, you know, uh, your in-depth knowledge of this topic, because I don't know. I don't know how worried to be. Well, you know, I'm from Switzerland myself. We are very skeptical and conservative people. In Canada, we have the luxury of a lot of freedom and political stability, so automatically people really don't pay attention to security and they feel very complacent. We should be extremely worried And we should start by thinking about securing more our data, about reducing our footprint on social media. And, uh, you know, sometimes you have to pay for a service that's going to have an identity theft protection or a secure email. Definitely we should not use free Wi-Fi and those things. There's a complacency in Canada uh, that is still there. And I think more and more with media and and media like yours, awareness to the general public is going to be the big battle. Hmm. So again, not you don't use uh, free Wi-Fi. Ultimately, are we not just saying that if you're not paying for a service, you are the product? Absolutely. In fact, I'm glad you said that you are the product and you're a product that continually manufactures uh, data. I, I said it on, on, a, on a TV station a month or two ago, data is more valuable than oil now, and we keep producing data. So if you use a free service, in general, the value that you have on a monthly basis is over 500 U.S. dollar to that uh, free service provider every month, because every month you have activity and you change and this creates new data. Well, it's uh, frightening but reassuring all at the same time. Alain, uh, GIE, thank you very much for adding your conversation to our show this afternoon. With, with pleasure. If I may add, so if, some, if somebody has any questions, they can go to our website, take a look at globexdatagroup.com. And uh, if they have any questions, they can contact us. We'll be happy to answer them. Fabulous. Thank you so, so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you, Sheldon. Alain GIE is, as mentioned, uh, the security expert with the Vancouver-based Globex Data or Data Limited.